Ayan, medyo nagpa-freshen up tayo eh Kasi kanina, lakad-lakad pa tayo sa ETSA Para hindi ma-traffic na ko po Sabi ko magpa-freshen up tayo Bago tayo mag-analyze ng anong nangyari Sa fast talk ni Isko and Tito Boy Andyan pa ba kayo? Purong ano lang yata Gusto nyo lang yata pag BBM and Lenny eh. Alam mo, bay- kayo ang bias Yung mga gusto lang manood, gusto lang mag-comment Gusto lang mag-analyze Porkit andun si BBM or si Lenny Pero kasi today special yan eh, si Isko. Kasi tignan yung ginawa ni Isko sa fast talk niya. Nice siya kay Pacquiao, nice siya kay Ping Lacson. Ang in niya, pareho na BBM and Lenny. At yun talaga doon natin nakikita na centrist talaga yung approach ni, ni Isko. Na yung central message ng kanyang kampanya is to say that we need to move forward and move on from the... Two camps no? Essentially, yun yung message na Kaya sabi niya parang wala siyang problema kay uh, Lacson Pwede naman daw At saka si uh, Pacquiao Okay naman daw Pero nung tinanong kay uh, Isko Anong tingin mo kay ano, BBM na criticize niya na Nako, magkakaroon na ng polarization And attack sa mga dilawan Pag tinanong naman kay Lenny Sinabi naman Nako po, attack na naman sa kila Marco So dito nakikita natin na nag-emerge yung core message At theme, no? if not the uh, driving force behind the ISCO campaign, which is a third way. no? So, transcending the binary nature of our politics. Of course, maraming Pilipino ay magsasabi na, eh, hindi, ta- yung isang camp ang tama dyan, kaya kailangan talaga akawain yung kapilang camp. And vice versa, di ba? Uh, the same way na may never again camp, meron din mga never dilaw camp na uh, lumalabas dyan. So, Ang sinasabi ni Isko is we have to go beyond that polarized uh, kind of setup and we rather have to focus on a solution-based government. So doon nakikita natin sa fast talk, lumabas talaga yan. Kasi hindi siya masyadong lumabas doon sa mga initial na mga tanong ni Tito Boy at saka yung mga sagot niya. But let me just go through this uh, very uh, quickly, no? yung mga key points. Um, ayan, sorry, medyo uh, windang ako. Ang layo nung nilakarin ko kanina eh. Anyways... Ayan, balikan natin to. So, let me just say this One uh, part of the interview that I really liked And I think kudos talaga to Isko for raising this Is yung West Philippines issue no? So, for anyone who was saying na ay si Isko ay isa Duterte light, etc Kitang kita natin na on the West Philippines issue Very clear yung distinction between Isko's stance and Tatay Digong's stance Because Tatay Digong stance is love, love, love China Let's be meek, let's be humble, let's get their mercy at We saw the result of that disastrous uh, amateur hour posturing over the past few years Situation got worse in the West Philippines Sea At saan yung mga billions and billions of dollars of investments ng China na sinisabi eh. So na Duterte siya, no? <laughs> but anyways, um, dito maganda yung sinabi ni Isko, no? Na sinabi niya, eh, yung China ay signatory sa on-clause. Sabi niya, ang tanong dito ay sa China, eh. Ay, ikaw ay signatory sa on-clause. So, hindi pwede na signatory ka sa on-clause para at the same time, ini-insist mo yung, yung sinasabi na historic rights at saka nine-dash line na hindi naman tugma sa prevailing international law na na-strike down ng arbitration award. And by the way, sana sila Tito Boy and other journalists correct this, hindi po PCA ang nag-decide. Yung Permanent Court of Arbitration po ay nag-release lang ng uh, yun yung depository ng mga documents at saka, at saka dun na-release yung final arbitration award. Pero actually, the court that decided it was in the Hague, in Netherlands, and it was formed under compulsory arbitration uh, uh, Article 287 Annex 7 ng on-clause. So, it's a different body. But anyways, maganda yung sinabi ni Isko na sana rin marinig na sa ibang candidates. I, I, I hope that Lenny will also emphasize that point na ang China po ay signatory na ratify na po nila yung on-clause. So, full member na sila, fully subjected sila sa international law. So, sana naman huwag sila mag-insist dun sa sinasabi nila na historic rights at kung anong mga ek-ek na ginawa nilang uh, kwento-kwento dyan na by the way if you really bother to study ano history niyan uh, look at the works of Bill Hayton and mga others actually komintang ang medyo may pakanan dyan eh. kaya kung pupunta ka sa Taiwan medyo similar din ng claims nila in fact it used to be 10 dash line but anyways this is not a lecture on West Philippines but yun nga in fairness kay Isko na emphasize niya na China has to abide by its own obligation after having signed and ratify the own clause in fairness, and itong issue ay hindi sovereignty issue. So, hindi kailangan ng 
ko, ng uh, consent ng both parties hindi naman ICJ ang pinag-usapan no? so dito na hindi natin na very clear yung difference ni Isko from both Tatay Digong and also from BBM because BBM didn't even bother to mention our mutual defense treaty with the US didn't even bother to discuss code of conduct and uh, negotiations at ASEAN didn't even bother to mention itong U uh, Chinese obligations under on clause at I'm not sure gano ka familiar mga tao dito dun sa nuances ng uh, you know hindi ito Ang, ang pinag-usapan dito ay maritime entitlement claims, hindi sovereignty claims. But anyways, anyways, uh, in fairness kay ISCO, na-mention niyan. And, in, and, and then, yun nga, nakita rin natin kay ISCO, emphasis on strengthening our naval capability. At later on, interesting yun, kasi dinikit niya ito dun sa issue ng droga. Kasi kung maraming shabu, crystal methamphetamine, ay galing abroad, base sa mga United Nations report, among others, I've cited that in my works, you can check it on Reuters, among others, andyan yan, mag-research kayo, okay? Mag-research kayo, huwag kayo mag-ano dyan. Alam natin saan galing yan. In, in fact, Prime Minister Mahathir, when he was here in the Philippines and I interviewed him, sabi rin niya, the problem of drugs is externally driven. So, ibig sabihin, we have to deal with it by strengthening yung ating patrol capacity, yung naval capacity, yung coast guard capacity para hindi makapasok ng mga droga sa Pilipinas. So, doon ay kita natin na ISCO is also very consistent doon sa need for strengthening our armed forces at naval capabilities. No, Which again, is quite different doon sa sinasabi ni Tatay Digong over the past few years na ay uh, hindi na kailangan ng mga ganyan-ganyan kasi ang problema natin internal, blah, blah, blah. Love, love, love naman yung China. And it's also different from yung sinasabi ni BBM na ay parang wala, parang medyo may pagka-defeatis na wala naman tayong laban sa China so let's just focus on bilateral negotiations. And by the way, Isko has also emphasized in our interview with him, in his interview tonight, and his different statements na kailangan natin leverage yung ating mga alliances. No alliance is perfect. Uh, but you have to make the most out of it. You have to push and pressure and leverage yung alliances to make sure na talagang uh, ma-strengthen natin yung posi bargaining position natin. Kasi kailangan mo ng bargaining position. Eh. Hindi ka pwede mag-negotiate kung wala kang leverage, wala kang bargaining position. No? So yun ang ginagawa natin ngayon. Diba? Uh, so yun. So in fairness to Isko, I think on the West Philippines issue, he had a much more nuanced, comprehensive answer. Yun lang, hindi masyadang napag-usapan siguro yung joint exploration and joint development, service contract. Medyo complicated yung issue na yan. But at least, in fairness kay Isko, di ba? Klaro naman siya. Yung, uh, what is ours is ours, di ba? And China can claim whatever they want, but we will stand by our claims in accordance to prevailing international law and the very own clause that China is a signatory to. So in fairness to him, I think he has to get credit for that. So yung mga uh, Isko haters dyan, wag naman kayo ano, di ba? Wag, wag hater, di ba? Uh, <laughs> Give credit where credit is due. So, hindi siya Duterte light as far as West West Philippines is concerned. Now, dun sa issue ng droga, it's interesting, I didn't hear as much emphasis on the issue of rehabilitation and prevention uh, uh, as I saw in his previous interviews, my discussions with him, and also as mentioned by BBM. In first grade, BBM, in emphasize niya kailangan ng rehabilitation, prevention, in emphasize din ni Lacson yan. Uh, si VP Lenny gave multiple, may, may parang five points siya to dealing with the drug problem, etc. Base dun sa kanyang very short experience as part of the task force against uh, yung illegal drugs sa Pilipinas. So medyo dun, ano eh, as parang biglang issue na punta na lang kung nag-drug siya or hindi. So parang biglang may pagka-showbiz na yun, parang nag-drugs ka ba, ganun, ganun. And then, never daw siya nag-drugs, etc. He has been responsible kid at uh, daw eh. Minention pa niya lahat ng mga drugs on the streets, di ba? <laughs> Parang, I think he was trying to emphasize na alam na alam niya yung pinag-usapan niya because he knows the reality on the ground. So, and yun nga, napansin ko rin si Tito Boy medyo less interjecting <laughs> than, than yung kay Lenny. But anyways, maybe the dynamics is different. And napansin ko overall, si Isko ay, ano eh, very assertive siya sa interviews. Now, I would say he's the most assertive dun sa mga interviews. You know, yung parang, I, I, hindi niya binibigyan ng, ano eh, interjection, in, interjection uh, chance masyado yung host eh. Boom, boom, boom siya eh. So, kumpara mo dun sa uh, ibang interviews, you could see na mas more, I won't say domineering, but more self-assertive uh, si Isko, no? So, you know, I'm not saying it's a good or bad thing. I'm just saying that's just what I noticed with him, no? Kumpara dun sa mga ibang uh, uh, mga candidates na nakita natin. And then, of course, uh, yung sinabi din niya dun sa issue ng disinformation and troll farms, etc. Alam natin na, in fairness kay, kay Isko, uh, you, know, i, you know, his camp is not known for being a camp driven by inauthentic, coordinated behavior, right? Now, we can have discussion, etc. about overall the how, how, you know, elections are becoming increasingly troll-driven, but 
the thing is, klarong klaro naman si Isko na yung mga social media platforms and companies, mga meta, mga ibigay natin dyan, they have to be held accountable at ile-leverage niya yung ICT uh, capabilities ng Estado, yung mandato natin to really ex- uh, ensure that yung algorithms ng mga companies ay hindi nag uh, encourage ng uh, fake news and disinformation networks. No? At interestingly, may mention niya yung possibility na parang kailangan mo nang mag-verify ng uh, identity before ka mag-register sa Facebook. So that would be an interesting thing because that will raise some issues of its own because not everyone may have access to certain identification ID, etc. But alam natin, for instance, kung mag-gcash ka, diba? or I think even now sa PayPal, they're requiring you to submit certain documents to verify yung identity mo. No? So, so perhaps this could go... I, I'm sure there are going to be legal and civil liberty issues uh, there. Pero alam natin na kung nangyari yan, maraming mga fake accounts ay mawala. Maraming mga, alam mo na, mga meta kabuhayan ay mawala. But for me, that's a good thing. You need to move in a certain way. I'm not saying 100% in endorse ko yung sabi ni Isko on that point. But in fairness to Isko, he emphasized A, social media platforms have to be held accountable and B, dapat uh, verify yung identity ng mga tao sa social media platforms to ensure there's accountability. At hindi puro mga dagsaan ng mga fake accounts na alam natin ang, anong, anong ginagawa dyan sa mga fake accounts na yan, di ba? So that's interesting. Uh, so yun, I, I think that was good. Now, dun sa issue ng um, abortion, I mean, Tito Boy was really trying to give Isko a chance to give a much more nuanced answer. Kasi for me, very categorical yung answer niya. Uh, talagang uh, very conservative, pro-life, etc. And in fact, minention nga ni, uh, ni uh, Tito Boy yung situations whereby yung life of the mother could be in danger and you have to make a choice, diba? So, so yun nga, parang siguro, I think Isko could have improved this answer there uh, by either going the Lakson or Lenny way, which is to say it's a contentious issue, we have to better study it on a case-to-case basis. Or, um, you know, he, he could have said that under extreme circumstances, right? Pwede magkaroon ng certain considerations, etc. No? Or, you know, as BBM, in fairness to BBM, I think he was the one who was, he went straight in and said, no, there are cases whereby the state should come in and make, make the decision, even though this may not be in accordance to prevailing moral standards, etc. But if this is in the interest of protecting the welfare of the citizens, then so be it. No? So, so, in fairness, Doon napansin ko na parang I think his answer was a little bit uh, lacking nuance because there are indeed certain extreme cases whereby a lot of democracies, uh, in fact, even conservative judges and states and jurisprudence allows for certain intervention back up by the state. But in fairness naman kay Isko, in-emphasize na yung pro-choice siya in a sense na tutulungan niya yung mga pamilya, lalo, lalo na yung mga mahirap na pamilya dun sa issue ng family planning. Because alam natin, isa ito sa mga pinakamalaking uh, challenge sa sa ano eh, sa ano sa ating bansa. I mean, the explosion of our population over the past 100 years is just... <laughs> uh, so talagang family planning is very much part of the fabric of developmental policy ng maraming, maraming kapitbahay natin dito. Indonesia and Thailand have done that more recently and successfully. More extreme naman yung ginawa ng China. Uh, Singapore ha- used to have something similar to that. Uh, so, so uh, Bangladesh has had very successful uh, population uh, management uh, policy. So, my RH bill naman tayo. So, I think Isko, what Isko is saying is that, parang salamat kay Pinoy eh, for for bringing the RH bill in, uh, you know, overseeing the RH bill coming to fruition. Duterte, in France, kay Pre- President Duterte also reinforced uh, yung primacy of the state on these issues. Uh, so, but but for Isko, para more, more proactive yung magiging tulong sa mga pamilya At alam niya eh, kasi galing siya sa hirap At he saw how lack of family planning or lack of access to the necessary resources for proper family planning Can have certain negative repercussions, no? including for the society And that's where kailangan na may uh, intervention uh, ng Estado no? Even though this may not sit well with certain uh, moral circles no? or sensibilities uh, for, for that matter But yun nga I think really, if you look at Isko Moreno, his fundamental message is siya ay isang solution-based, third-way centrist candidates. At kung pagod ka na dun sa mga uh, Dilao versus Pula, uh, Marcos versus ano, yung, yung ganun na binary fights, then I am your candidate. So he made that centrist argument, I think, much clearer 
and much more forcefully than uh, let's say Ping or Pacquiao no uh, so I in that sense he's really the I would say there may pa grace po talaga I think there's a lot of continuity between him and Grace po, and I won't be surprised that later on Grace po will come ki kind of uh, surrogate for him and try to uh, promote him no uh, but let's see I mean tingnan natin dynamics of the race by the way meron decision in Comelec Division 1 right uh, na hindi masyadong shocking like parang hmm anyways uh, from what I heard mukhang the Marcos Camp is feeling very very good right now no mukhang medyo na clear na yung kanilang yung ano na yung magte-take off na yung airplane diba but anyways uh, we can have a discussion in Comelec uh, decision division 1 a little bit separately uh, by the way meron kami interview with uh, Chel Jokno senator candidate pinag-usapan namin issue ng social justice yung nangyari pa noon ng Marcos at anong mga nagiging path dependency implication niyan para sa atin including yung weaknesses ng ating judicial ins institutions at saka yung systemic uh, impunity sa ating bansa so i-release po namin yung interview with Chel Jokno uh, soon so abangan nyo po yan anyways meron pa ba, meron ba kayong tanong but yun nga Isko really ended on a very strong note in a sense that he went after both, both Marcos and Lenny uh, but sobrang mabait si Kilaping and, and, and Pacquiao. Let's see what Pacquiao will say tomorrow dun sa kanyang interview. So, looking forward to that. Ayan, shout out kay Roliano. Kamusta ba kayo dyan? Ayan, wag kayo magalit sa akin ha. Alam ko maraming ano dyan. Mga, ano na, alam, alam, alam nyo na this. Alam nyo na this. Basta. Basta. Okay, we're trying to be fair and objective and all. Yun lang. Yun lang masasabi natin dito. Uh, by the way, let me put this ha. Uy, grabe ka. Yung background ko, totoo yung mga libro niya. Na, excuse me, binasa ko yan. And hindi niyo pa nakita yung Kindle ko, di ba? Kasi you reach a point where by Kindle makes more sense in a sense that mas madali kumuha ng mga quotes from pages, etc. So later on when you want to use it for academic sourcing, etc. Mas madali mag magamit. Kasi nahirapan ako. Yung lalong makakapal na book, hanapin mo pa, punta ka pa sa index. So, anyways, yon May mga ano daw, meron din mga book-book sa likod nila. Anyways, ewan ko dun sa mga iba, hindi na ako mag-comment. Speaking of bias, well, I mean, any any real, real journalist has a bias for truth. Has a bias for standing up for truth. Has a bias for standing up to, uh, against abuse of power. Has a bias for democracy and pluralism for that matter. So, yeah. So, let's be very clear about this concept of bias, right? Because there's bad bias, there's super obvious bias, and there's there's... There's progressive pro-democracy bias, right? So, let's be very clear about that. Ayan, si Arvin. Nagpapa-shoutout. Kamusta ba kay Jan? Shoutout din kay Sunny. Ayan, yung si Kim. Ay, napansin niyo yung Bruce Lee ko. Ayan, hindi, hanapin ko saan yung naka-yellow siya, eh. Diba yung ano? Ito yung Bruce Lee na may bigote pa nga, eh. Classic yan, oo. Tapos yan si Bruce Lee, alam mo. Yan 